I want to move on to something which seems a little bit humdrum. Uh, it seems maybe a little bit boring, um, but you know, in recent years, I personally have had a, a renaissance in using activated carbon in my aquariums. Um, some uh, early aquarium authors uh, kind of scared the aquarium hobby against using carbon for the fear that it was going to take all the trace elements out of the water. But that's not true, and um, so it's fallen out of favor quite a bit, but we're seeing it used more. And I've always tried to get, uh, you know, the best carbon that I could get. And so when you said that you had a carbon that you thought was the best on the market, I really noticed. So tell me about the reef spec carbon. What, what makes it reef spec worthy? Okay. First of all, you need to understand that even I, when I started my days in the hobby, I were, was familiar <laughs> with the three types of filtration. Biological filtration, mechanical filtration, and chemical filtration. When you talked about chemical filtration, you refer to activate carbon. So this is a little bit of misconception. Activate carbon is a fine type of mechanical filtration, okay? Uh, and activate carbon deals with all the small molecules that the skimmers do not strip out of the water before they start to mineralize to the compounds that we don't want, the nitrate and the phosphate, for example. So let's backtrack just a little bit. What is this kind of carbon and what is activated about it? Uh, the term activated means that it has high surface area with a lot of pores, tiny pores in different sizes, mesopore, macropore, they are all technical terms, uh, that can trap the tiniest molecules between 10 nanometers to 50 or 60 nanometers. These are the size of molecules that most, uh, most of them are not trapped by the foam and you need a further or advanced filtration um, equipment to pull them out of the water. So uh, th this carbon is, is not coal, right? Yeah. No, this, okay, there are a few types of carbons. In water treatment, you usually use the ligonite or anthracite or different types of coal. Uh, these carbon salts uh, were found, uh, some of them causing HLLE disease because they release the finest dust to the water. We use uh, a coal, we use a shell, a coconut shell, okay, because it has the highest surface area and the highest pole uh, proportion, okay? You get the proportion between the volume and the pole's cap volume, it's the highest in, in, in a coconut shell. So, so just to recap, activated carbon, you know, we think of it as a, a chemical form of filtration, and that's partially true, but it's more accurate to say that it's a, it's a micro-mechanical filter, and it's got a small pore size, that can trap larger compounds uh, like dissolved organic cabin, carbon. And it, the activation process is what creates some of the chemical bonds. No, the, the activation, we need to understand that sometimes there are carbon that are activated or being added some chemicals to convert them to resins. And then they have some electrical charge that help to absorb uh, more other molecules. Uh, when the activate carbon is saturated with organic material, some organic compounds has negative charge, okay? And only then they can absorb some of the metals with positive charge. This is why we recommend to change the carbon before it becomes saturated, and then it can absorb uh, some of the elements. But again, our tests demonstrate that the amount of carbon that is needed to strip out uh, the trace element is, is significant, it's very high. It's not the levels that we use in our aquarium. So basically, you don't deplete any trace element with, with a proper amount of activated carbon. So I just want to re repeat that. With a proper amount of reef spec carbon, you're not going to pull out your trace elements. As long as you take it out after a month or two months, and it doesn't become saturated and it become an organic filter. Right. You understand, you don't have the, the molecules, the organic molecules to add, absorb elements. Again, so 
it's it's much better to use a small amount of carbon in your tank and replace it often than to be lazy and use a big tub of carbon and you know pe people use a big tub of carbon because they don't want to change it out as often but that's what leads to some of the trace element depletion and just you know chain reactions that are undesirable so I thought I was using a high quality carbon for a long time uh, from some of the major brands, but you have done some testing on this particular carbon that uh, has led you to believe that it's uh, ab you know, a cut above. What, is, what are some of the analysis that you've done to, to measure the capability of this uh, carbon? Uh, we use the uh, NIST and ASTM method to measure or to, to uh, define the quality of carbon. These are very common tests in the, you know, in the industry, in the wastewater industry. This is the methylene blue adsorption capacity, which uh, it's called a methylene blue number, and the iodine number. This is the ability to absorb the tiniest molecules that you can find in the aquarium, which refers to phenols, some carbohydrates, some uh, long uh, chain of, of starch or, or um, you know, uh, fatty acids or fatty compounds. Uh, we got the highest level. We look for the carbon that will give us the highest methylene number and iodine number we can get. This will um, gar guarantee the highest adsorption capacity. So since a lot of reefers today may have uh, kind of lost touch with using carbon in a reef tank, um, what are some of the recommendations you have for someone who is just using carbon or maybe using a, a high quality carbon for the first time? Um, first of all, you need to understand that with high uh, quality activate carbon, you strip out a lot of organics from the water. This means that the light penetration will be increased significantly, especially the UV, because all the organic molecules in the aquarium and some of the metals in the seawater mix trap the UV light, block it, okay? When you strip out the organics, the amount of UV and the blue uh, wavelengths penetrates better to the system. What it means that the photosynthetic activity will increase and eventually it can create some photo inhibition activities. Therefore, bear in mind that when you put a new activate carbon, pay attention to your corals. Okay, the water will be clear after several hours and the light penetration will be increased. Change your carbon between months to two months, okay? Use the exact quantity we recommend, okay? You just want to strip out all the molecules that the protein schema uh, didn't handle.